If you are thinking about switching to DaVinci Resolve from Premiere Pro, but you think that the color page is a bit too overwhelming, this is the video you want to watch because in this video, I am going to compare every step that you take in the Lumetri color panel from Premiere Pro into DaVinci Resolve. So for example, what does the exposure tool within Premiere corresponds to within DaVinci Resolve? I am sure that at the end of this video, you'll be able to color correct your footage, perhaps color grade your footage in Resolve if you've never used it before. So without any further ado, let's start. All right, so on the Lumetri color panel, you pretty much see that the basic corrections is the first thing you are sort of guided through. In Resolve, that whole basic corrections panel corresponds to the wheels area. So pretty much all the corrections that you can do in the basic corrections, you can do in the wheel section over here. So let's go through it. The first one is your input LUTs. Now, this is a little different. The LUT section is right on the top here. I will leave a link in the description below about LUTs um, so you know how to use LUTs and how to install them. But the LUTs can be found here and your input LUT would be the first LUT of your um, note tree. Yeah, So you put it here and your creative LUT will be going here. But that's uh, for later in this video. Next up is the white balance selector. And in Resolve, you can find it over here. So you can search for a white sort of surface, click on it, and it will correct it to that white surface for you. I pretty much never use this one, but it can be useful if you have a gray card or a color checker in the frame at, for example, an interview or something. Sweet, let's get out of that. Next is your white balance parameters. Yeah, so pretty much the same temperature sliders here and your tint sliders here. Not really difficult. Next up is your exposure. Now, exposure is a little different. So in Resolve, we call that lift gamma gain offset. Now, your lift gamma gain, lift gamma gain, will correspond to the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And your offset is corresponding to the exposure. The offset will sort of trigger the entirety of the image, and you know the rest will sort of eliminate a part of the scopes. Yeah. And if you want more control, you can go into the log menu and you have even more control over what is changing within that range. So now it really affects only the shadows and that one really affects only the midtones and so forth. Be careful because you're clipping way faster in the log section than in the wheel section. But I'm going in depth on that part in another video. Next up is contrast, pretty simple, is this slider here. For a normal sort of log image that is not really super, super flat, I would go for a 1.2, but for example, this one is uh, generation five, and if we would do that all by yourself, I would go all the way up to 1.4 or something, but I feel like you just have to uh, play around with it. Then we also have a pivot point here. Um, this is basically where you can set the midpoint for your contrast, and that is something that you miss in uh, the basic corrections of Premiere, so that's pretty cool. Another added feature. All right, next up is your saturation slider and that it's down here. Pretty sweet, no. That already looks pretty good to me. Wow, a few like tweaks here and there and you're good to go. Anyway, let's go over to the creative part, all right? So the creative tab on the Premiere Lumetri color panel is basically the place where you start building out your grade. Now, Premiere is sort of more tailored to uh, using LUTs, and of course, Resolve is a bit more advanced, so you can you know do a little bit more in this program, I believe. But um, yeah, so let's see how you can use a creative LUT in this tab. In the Lumetri color panel, you just press the drop down menu, select browse, and you know click the LUT you want to use. But um, that is a little different in Resolve. So what I normally do is I, you know, use the last node as my, or one of the last nodes as my creative LUT. Um, let's just put one on there real quick, Joker Rec 709. Um, and then this is happening, all right? So you have your, your LUT here, very intense. So that's why the intensity slider is right underneath that uh, frame in the Lumetri color panel. Now, how do we do the same thing in Resolve? You go over to the key section here, click it, then key output and take out all the gain and then slowly introduce a little bit um, until you're satisfied. Now I'm gonna do some minor adjustments here uh, to raise the shadows a touch because I like that a little better because I want I wanna keep a little bit of detail in the fur. 
that's good. Okay, if you want to learn more about using LUTs, especially in Resolve or Premiere, head over to the description below because I'll leave the video I posted um, about LUTs. Very useful. All right, next up, you'll see that on the Creative tab in Lumetri Color Panel, you have a little bit more controls. You have the Vibrant, Sharpen, Faded Film, uh, I have to check it out here, uh, saturation, and then two color wheels. Um, you don't really have that in Resolve. That is more sort of scattered out over different pages, but of course you can get the same result. If you do a tweak, I would always do it on a separate node. And especially if you want to make like one sort of change in your grade, but that is affected by one global adjustment, I would always do it as a parallel node. So let's say we want to change the way our LUT looks, we create a new node and then make some parallel nodes, okay? Now that looks very confusing. Let's drag this one over. And then for example, this would be your, uh, what's it? Faded film by just utilizing a little bit of, uh, of you know, like your, uh, your curves. Then that could be your saturation. You could boost it a little bit. And this could be, what's it, vibrance. You know, so many things to do, but I would always try to keep um, one global adjustment that is separated over more smaller adjustments in a parallel node configuration. I hope that makes sense. Now I say it, it sounds really difficult, but it is, you know, once you get a hang of it, it's pretty easy. <laughs> But yeah, that's with all the skills, of course. But uh, if it doesn't make sense, let me know in the comments. I'll help you out there. All right, so next up is the color wheels. Well, the color wheels um, pretty much function the same way as the color wheels a little further down in the Lumetri panel. Uh, and they do exactly the same as they do here. Now in Resolve, you have a little bit more control over the wheels because these wheels will sort of change the entirety of the image while the log wheels will really sort of grab onto a smaller part of the image. So now I am basically only changing what happens here in the darker areas of the, of the, of the image, while as I would do it here, um, you know, all like literally everything sort of changes uh, in corresponding with the entire scale, meaning that not only the shadow part, but also the highlights will be dragged down or dragged up or pushed up or whatever you want to call it. So that is a little different. So if you want more control, you go over to the log wheels. And if you want global control, you do it in the lift gamma gain or the normal wheels. All right. So yeah, just have to play around with it and see what different tweaks do to the image. All right, I don't recommend to do this on the LUT node here, but to make a different node. So what I did was kind of wrong. So let me uncheck that and then make a new node and then make some adjustments if you so desire. Anyway, too much details here. Let's uh, continue to the curve menu. Let me take off the creative LUT here because we're not using that one for this example. The curves are exactly the same as in the Lumetri color panel. The only thing is that it is sideways here instead of, uh, you know, from top to bottom. Um, so the first dot here is basically your regular sort of curves that you are used to. Yeah, so if you want a little bit more control over the S curve, you can go to these three dots here and then edible splines, click this one, and then you can drag this one up and drag this one down. Now you have a better S curve, um, but since we already sort of have a very contrasty LUT on there, uh, it's not really necessary. Anyway, if you go down the line, you see that you have U versus U, U versus saturation, U versus luminance, and then luminance versus saturation, set versus set, and then set versus luminance. The one that I found very useful is the U versus U that really lets you change all the colors and you can really isolate different colors. So let's say we change this blue dot here then we can, you know, just by playing around with this dot here, you see that the sky is changing, nice purple sky. Ooh. That is what you can do in the U versus U. Of course, the U versus saturation slider will sort of really isolate the colors in that area. So now we can boost the saturation of the blues, all right? So if you take that off, you see that there's a pretty big change. Now let's see if we boost the colors of the fur. There's even more to, uh, to play around with. <laughs> You see what happens. So same goes for uh, you versus luminance that will increase the luminance value of a particular color. So if we boost that up here, then you see that, oop, that if we take off this one, 
wait, let's just undo this whole thing. Then you can see that it is changing the output, the luminance output of a specific color. All right. So that is what the curves do. So pretty much exactly the same as you would use them in Premiere. Now, next up is your color wheels. As already mentioned, they are found on the wheel section here. They're used to push colors into a specific sort of luminance value of the image. So lift is your shadow area mostly. And if you want more control, again, you go to the log wheels. I already mentioned this, so uh, yeah. Next up is the HSL secondary. Now, this is uh, a pretty difficult one for some people, but actually it's really easy and super useful to know how to use it. So the HSL secondary is corresponding to the qualifier tool. So click it. And what this does is HSL secondary stands for use saturation luminance. And this actually sort of allows you to really isolate particular colors. Yeah, so let's say we want only to use the darker areas of this image. What we can do is we deselect the U, we deselect the saturation because it's not, um, we're not sort of specifying anything on colors nor um, the intensity of the colors, but more on the sort of light output. Yeah, and we only want the darker parts. So if we press Shift H, we see that nothing is selected now. Okay, so if we slowly start increasing this, once it sort of passes a threshold of uh, a luminance value, you see that it's starting to add colors into our image. Now, if I would leave it here and I would soften it out a little bit, uh, soft this side, nice, blur it out a little bit as well, then if I would make a change on this uh, node now, let's undo this, it would only affect this area. So let's maybe take off a little bit more. So only the fur is selected. Let's see what happens if I drag down the offset. You see that only that part is selected. Pretty sweet. This tool gives you full control over not only the luminance values, but also the U and the intensity of the colors. So let's say we want to only use this part. We can, if we press Shift H again, you can see which colors you have selected. And there you go. Now, one cool thing is that you can actually use a pipette or color sort of dropper thingy. What's, what's it called? A qualifier, of course. So you just press the qualifier and you just hover over color that you want to add into your selection. And there you go. Or maybe you want to do another color, so. Here you go, only the blue ones. Now, if you want to feather the edges a little bit, you can do so by slowly dragging over the edges. If you want to take a little bit feather out, you can, of course, do the same thing in reverse. So there's a ton of options to do that sort of thing in the qualifier panel. Of course, you have the same sort of tools inside the HSL secondary panel, but I felt like it was a little bit more difficult to use, not as intuitive, but yeah, of course, that's because Resolve is, yeah, very good. <laughs> I mean, Premiere is very good too, but this is just a little bit more intuitive. It works a little bit more as you would sort of expect it. Um, but yeah, all right, cool. Next up in the line of our Lumetri color panel is the vignette uh, section. Well, this is something that you don't have built into sort of this area here. What you can do, however, is on a specific node, you can make a power window. So go to the power window section and then press this sort of um, no, circle. Wow. And then drag it out and then feather it and then maybe zoom out a little bit and, uh, you know, make it a little bigger. And then if you press shift H again to take it off, now you can... Um, darken the corners. Now it is darkening the inside. So if you want to flip that, you just click this button boop, and now it is darkening the edges. All right. So you can play around with the shape of the, of the, of the vignette and then uh, the intensity of the feather, of course. And then if you want to X out of this, just press on another note and there you go. So pretty, pretty nice, pretty easy way to, uh, create a specific sort of vignetting effect. You can also just go to open effects up here and then scroll down. I think there's a vignette sort of option here as well. Let me search for it. 
Fichneta. Yeah, there it is. So you can, if you if you deselect this one, you can drop it on there. And I think, yeah, so this is a built-in effect, basic, advanced. So you can just play around with the size and all that stuff. So there's multiple ways you can do it. There's a bunch of effects here as well, built into Resolve, such as grain or JPEG damage. That one's pretty cool as well. So you can sort of, you know, yeah, well, it looks horrible. Anyway, uh, a lot of cool stuff you can play around with, and I highly recommend you play around with it because it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so I know there's a lot of uh, difficulties in Resolve, but I would suggest that you just sort of dive into this program and test out different things. You know, if you sort of get the hang of how nodes work, and it's a very easy and s simple way to understand, it's like every node holds one adjustment and you go from the left to the right. Same as in Premiere, you go from the top to the bottom. So you make your basic corrections in the beginning and you make your more sort of advanced corrections in the end, all right? So that is it for this video. I hope it kind of made sense. It is, of course, in the end, a very difficult program to get used to, but once you are sort of getting in the flow, it is so intuitive and everything works exactly how you would expect it. So I would highly recommend you guys just trying it out. Um, you know, trying to follow this video along while having Premiere open, uh, I mean, having Resolve open and just play around with all the tools that I mentioned in this video. And uh, yeah, let me know if this helped you. And uh, if not, let me know as well, because then maybe I can make another video trying to explain it in easier terms. But um yeah, for now, this is as easy as I can make it. <laughs> anyway, enough talk. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you guys on Monday or Fridays. Yeah. Man, my mouth is dry now.